Hello again and welcome back to year four of the Religious Education Initiative. This is week 21 and we're continuing our way through First Kingdoms for our day one readings. That's also First Samuel. So last time we began the story of David, we saw him anointed as God's chosen king by the prophet Samuel, and then we saw him begin to serve Saul as his armor bearer, also playing the harp and singing for him when he was troubled by the evil spirit that began to oppress him after he abandoned the way of the Lord. We also saw the war between Israel and the Philistines heat up as the Philistines encamped in the territory of the tribe of Judah and the Philistine champion Goliath came out to challenge the men of Israel to come out and fight him. This week we will see what happens when David hears this challenge. So this is the beginning of well, verse 12 of chapter 17. Now David was the son of an Ephrathite of Bethlehem in Judah named Jesse who had eight sons. In the days of Saul, the man was already old and advanced in years. The three oldest sons of Jesse had followed Saul to the battle. The names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next to him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest. The three eldest followed Saul. But David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening. Jesse said to his son David, Take for your brothers an ephah of this parched grain and these ten loaves, and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers. Also take these ten cheeses to the commander of their thousand. See how your brothers fare, and bring some token from them. <clears throat> now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, took the provisions, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to the battle line, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, ran to the ranks, and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. And David heard him. All the Israelites, when they saw the man, fled from him and were very much afraid. The Israelites said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. The king will greatly enrich the man who kills him and will give him his daughter and make his family free in Israel. David said to the man who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The people answered him in the same way, So shall it be for the shall, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. His eldest brother, Eliab, heard him talking to the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. He said, Why have you come down? With whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption and the evil of your heart, for you have come down just to see the battle. David said, What have I done now? It was only a question. He turned away from him toward another and spoke in the same way, and the people answered him again as before. When the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul, and he sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, the Lord, who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi, which is the, the gully, and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield-bearer in front of him. 
When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. There was no sword in David's hand. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine. He grasped his sword, drew it out of its sheath, and killed him. Then he cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. The troops of Israel and Judah rose up with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron, so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way from Sharaim as far as Gath and Ekron. The Israelites came back from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their camp. David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. When Saul saw David go out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this young man? Abner said, As your soul lives, O king, I do not know. The king said, Inquire whose son the stripling is. On David's return from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. So, this is a long reading, and we could, we could talk for a long while about this. Uh, there are two points that I think it's worth making. First, this narrative seems to have the signs of... Uh, it's a very vivid story. This is not a dry... Um, it's, it's not a dry archive or annal. This, this is a story that has been told and told again, uh, and it has all the drama of, of a storyteller's art. Uh, and, and, and this makes sense. This, this, this seems to me clearly to have come through from an oral tradition, a story that is told and retold and retold. And you know, because it's a great story, that doesn't mean it isn't true. It means a story that is so vivid, so important, so formative that everyone is telling the story. And it seems to me that the story has been told by different people at different times, and the version that ends up being written down seems to be like trying to pull in all the threads of the story as it's written down. And sometimes I think the order of these things it doesn't it is not entirely transparent to us. And we need to remember this. This you know, the, the, the book of, of First Samuel or of First Kingdoms is not written down as a start to finish narrative in the same way as we would think of, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a history w would be. It's, it's history, but it's, it's not that kind of history. Um, so the question arises and isn't necessarily clear. Did David go and play the harp for Saul before he killed Goliath? Or was that something that happened afterwards? Saul doesn't seem to know David here uh, when he comes uh, and, 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 and puts on Saul's armor and gets ready to go and, and, and fight with Goliath. Certainly at the end there, when Saul is asking, who is this man? You know, who is this guy? Uh, and Abner says, I don't know. Well, he would know. So it, it seems like the, the story of David uh, playing the harp for Saul 
uh, is is put in that place not because it happened prior to uh, David killing Goliath, but maybe as I think we suggested last week, uh, because it shows David uh, being the vessel of God's presence to drive away the evil spirits from Saul. Uh, it, it's it's there for a different reason. And some of the the questions about order that come up in in the passage we read today are maybe similar. So remembering what kind of uh, that the script, the, the scripture here, it's true, but in what way is it true? If we if we say it's true, and that means it's it, it's written like we expect history be to be written with this thing happening first and then this thing happening second, and exactly in the order that it's all written down. I I, I don't think that's the case. These are true stories about David that are all being included here, so nothing is left out, uh, and then we're left to basically here, okay, these are the stories that are, are being passed down to us. That's for anyone that's confused by the different elements here. Uh, beyond this, though, we need to be really attentive to the what we see David doing. Uh, and if we... Uh, David's defeat of Goliath is a prefigurement, a shadow, a prophecy, a sign of... Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ's defeat of death, um, and I don't, I, I won't go into every one of the elements that made me think of this. Uh, although you know the fact that David doesn't hang back, but he rushes toward Goliath, uh, the fact that uh, he he swings a stone that that's shaped in the river, it's not shaped by a human hand, uh, that resonates with the vision of uh, of Daniel. Uh, or rather of Nebuchadnezzar that Daniel sees and interprets. Uh, but, but I saw this actually in, a, in an old Christmas carol, uh, and it's, it's worth, worth noting. David kills Goliath with Goliath's own sword. David overthrows him with the tools of, of humility and weakness, with a shepherd's, uh, with a shepherd's tools. But then he destroys Goliath's power with Goliath's own power, even as our Lord submits himself in humility to death and then destroys the power of death by means of death itself. Uh, th th this is not accidental. We see David being presented as a Messianic figure as a Christ figure, which is what Messian, you know, what Christ figure means, a Messianic figure. So anyway, I could keep on talking, but I won't. Uh, but think about this, pay attention to it, and, and notice, oh, you know, David's brothers are jealous of him. They remember that he's, you know, ha he has this anointing, he has this calling, and they're jealous of him. We see uh, the, 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 the so-called brothers of Jesus being jealous of him. Uh, in a similar way, there's a lot of, of, of resonance here. Anyway, that's enough. Like I say, I could keep on talking. God bless you all. We'll see you shortly for day two.